हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ द एम सी क्यूज ऑन इंट्रा यूट्राइन इन्फेक्शन न द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज चाइल्ड वॉज बॉर्न विद माइक्रोसिफेली जॉन्डिस हिपैटोस्प्रीनोमिगैली एंड परप्यूरा दिस चाइल्ड इज सस्पेक्टेड टू हैव कॉन्जेनाइटल साइटोमिगेलो वायरस इन्फेक्शन ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन आर रिक्वायर्ड एट बर्थ एक्सेप्ट राइट तो एग्जामिनर हैज गिवन दैट दे आर सस्पेक्टिंग द साइटोमिगेलो वायरस इन्फेक्शन एंड साइटोमिगेलो वायरस इन्फेक्शन बेसिकली इफ यू कंसिडर देयर कैन बी टू टाइप ऑफ फीचर्स वन इज द जनरलाइज फीचर्स विच आर सीन इन अप्रॉक्सीमेटली एवरी इंट्रा यूट्राइन इन्फेक्शन अनदर इज द स्पेसिफिक फीचर अनदर इज द स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स इन द जनरलाइज फीचर्स देयर इज हिपैटोस्प्लिनो मिगैली If there is hepatomegaly, this will lead to the increased liver enzymes, and if there is splenomegaly, this will cause thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia, right? And the specific features they include is the microcephaly. It includes is the periventricular calcification. periventricular calcifications this includes is the sensory neural hearing loss and this includes is the retinitis right so if you suspecting cytomegalo virus first of all we need a confirmation for that and that is confirmed by urine or saliva pcr urine or saliva pcr so that means this test needs to be done then is hearing evolution indicated yes snhl sorry cytomegalo virus is the most common infectious cause of snhl in children so hearing evolution is indicated ophthalmological evolution is also indicated so out of the choices given what is not indicated is the kidney function test that is not indicated what else should you do you should always go for the complete blood count cbc is required even to rule out the thrombocytopenia that should be done ct or mri brain is required for the evolution so this all things should be done in a child suspected to have cytomegalo virus at birth moving on to the question number 2 mother has history of spiramycin taken during pregnancy so examiner is already saying that mother was giving spiramycin during pregnancy that means mother was diagnosed to have toxoplasma during pregnancy physical examination was normal at birth child did not had any abnormalities at birth child was under regular follow up and at 12 months of age igg antibodies for toxoplasma are positive but there is no symptoms there is no symptoms next step in the management is before going to the answer here we follow what is the aims neonatology protocol for a toxoplasma uh, case right so here the mother is having toxoplasma so what you do is at birth you will be doing the physical examination that is one thing you are doing physical examination apart from this you will be doing the ophthalmological evolution ophthalmological evolution and you will be doing is the ct brain because if you see what is the toxoplasma triad you can get in a child you can get is the hydrocephalus you can get is the intracranial calcification intracranial calcification right and plus you can get is the corio retinitis so for this you require is the ophthalmological corio retinitis and hydrocephalus intracranial calcification require ct brain plus you will do igm antibodies and igg antibodies right if this igm antibodies they come out to be positive they come out to be positive you basically do the treatment and the treatment is pyrimethamine plus sulfadiazine which is given for 12 months right but if this is 
negative and IgG antibodies are positive. This might be antibodies transferred from the mother. So what does it say? You need to repeat the IgG at 12 months. IgG at 12 months. Right? If this IgG is still positive, it is still positive, it cannot be the antibodies transferred from the mother passively. Right? So what you need to do is, you need to consider it, it is a case of asymptomatic congenital infection. It is a case of asymptomatic, asymptomatic congenital infection. And you have to treat it with again the same pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine. So you need to treat this with what? Pyrimethamine plus sulfadiazine. Right? But if it is repeat IgG at 12 months is negative, that indicates no infection. That indicates no infection. So if I go to the question which we, which we have asked here, the mother has taken history of spiramycin that indicates it is the toxoplasma which is confirmed. Physical examination is normal. 12 months of age IgG antibodies are positive but there is no symptoms. So it is a case of what? It is a case of asymptomatic congenital infection and what needs to be done? You need to give pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine for 12 months. Right now, if you say regular follow up and repeat IgG antibodies at 18 months, no, this is not true. It is due to maternally transmitted antibodies, not true because maternally transmitted antibodies they basically are up to the age of six months. No treatment required, but hearing evaluation required. No sensory neural hearing loss is not a component of the toxoplasma. Right? So while choosing the answer, please exclude the other ones and then choose the appropriate answer. You might not be knowing the exact answer, but that is the way of solving these MCQs. Going on to the third MCQs, mother was fluorescent triponymal antibody absorption test positive, FTABS positive in first trimester, but no treatment was taken. At birth, the child is normal on physical examination and VDRL titer is less than four times as mother. Next step in the management is. Next step in the management is. Now, if you see, first we show, uh, sorry, we solve the question step by step. First, they are saying FTA ABS positive in first trimester. FTA ABS is a specific triponymal test. They are not saying VDRL test. So it is saying FTA ABS, ABS test, that means the mother is having the syphilis. Mother is having the syphilis, right? If, I, if somebody says mother has got VDRL test positive in first trimester, first trimester, what is supposed to be done? You need to do the repeat specific triponymal test. We need to repeat the specific triponymal test. But in this case, already it is given that the mother specific triponymal test is positive. So what is to be done? VDRL of child at birth. VDRL of child at birth. Right? And this comes out to be positive. You look at the titers. And the titers are less than 4 times or equal to 4 times as mother as mother. If this is the situation, this might be possible congenital syphilis, not confirmed. Word what we are using is possible. What we are saying, VDRL of the child is done only if there is history of specific triponymal test being positive. The titers, they are less than four times as mother. Then you should go for the physical examination of the child physical examination of the child to rule out all the deformities which you might get at this time. You can get vasculitis, you can get rhinitis, you can particularly get uh, periosteitis. So you should rule out all the physical examination plus CBC complete blood count again to rule out thrombocytopenia plus CSF examination for VDRL. CSF examination for VDRL, 
right the further management will depend upon what it will depend upon whether the mother has taken adequate treatment in pregnancy adequate treatment in pregnancy then you will give is the single dose of penicillin you will give is the single dose of penicillin but if there is not adequate treatment not adequate treatment right or or proper evaluation is not possible proper evaluation is not possible proper evaluation means you are not able to do csf examination that is not possible you need to give is penicillin for 10 days you need to give is penicillin for 10 days right so situation we have given is vdrl of the child now if i go to the same question here right vdrl titer is less than 4 times so this can be possible possible congenital syphilis at birth child is normal on the physical examination so what should be the next step we should do the cbc and the csf examination cbc and the csf examination you should always do the csf examination right now csf examination is only required if there are neurological signs present no this is not true as the child is normal and titer is not raised no further evaluation is required that is also not true and penicillin g should be started for 10 days no it will depend upon whether there is history of adequate treatment then only you will decide whether 10 days penicillin is required or a single dose of penicillin is required right so this was the question on the congenital syphilis so now moving on to the question number 4 Six days child was exposed to a staff nurse suffering from chicken pox. All are true about the management in this child except all are true about the management. This question is just basically ki what to do if a child gets exposed to the chicken pox, right? Now first thing according to the AIMS protocol they say child should be discharged as soon as possible. Best is this. If the child cannot be discharged then the child should be placed in isolation. from 8 to 21 days it should be placed in isolation that is two thing third thing varicella zoster immune globulin to be given to child and a cyclo we started not true because it will depend upon what is the gestation and whether there is maternal history of varicella and that is the only point by which i have framed this question because i wanted that you should remember that point which is an important one so this is not true i'll be explaining this so what we should do is we should ascertain what is the gestational age of the child and then the decision will be taken whether to give varicella zoster immune globulin or not if the infant is less than 28 week we will give varicella zoster immune globulin irrespective of irrespective of maternal history of varicella irrespective of maternal history of varicella so please remember that if less than 28 weeks you are giving varicella zoster immune globulin at any case if the child is 28 to 36 weeks 28 to 36 weeks in that case if there is maternal history of varicella then you are not giving varicella zoster immune globulin varicella zoster immune globulin is only given if there is no maternal history of varicella it is only given if there is no maternal history of varicella and above 36 weeks it is not required above 36 weeks it is not required and it can be one of the potential mcqs which can be asked so please remember what are the indications of giving the varicella zoster immune globulin in a neonat going on to the last question in the first trimester ultrasonography increased fetal translucency was noted regarding intrauterine infection it can be seen in 
right now this can very well be seen in parvovirus b19 infection how to explain this parvovirus b19 basically affects the p receptor antigen p receptor antigen and this p receptor antigen is present on the trophoblasts trophoblasts it is present on the rbc it is present on the cardiac myocytes it is present on the cardiac myocytes right and as it affects the rbcs it causes the pro normoblastic arrest pro normoblastic arrest which leads to fetal anemia fetal anemia and this fetal anemia causes basically high drops and due to this high drops you get is the increased nuchal translucency thickness right and if you see the other features in the parvovirus you can also get is the myocarditis right we are we have framed this question that in which intrauterine infection because normally you study the increased increased translucency thickness is seen in the down syndrome in the turner syndrome but i have framed that in which intrauterine infection it can be seen and it is due to this and put to be specifically it is the non immune high drops right so this was discussion of the mcqs on the intrauterine infection thanks